Start recording. Got them both going. Let's see. Let's see how this works out. I've never done this before. Howdy, everybody. This is Steve here, KM9G. Today, I'm going to build the QRP Labs QCX PA. It's an amplifier. It'll put out up to 50 watts on a single band. And the reason why it does that is because it's super cheap. And, and cheap meaning cost effective, not cheap meaning poorly constructed. Construction is up to you. I've got this thing on the bench right here. We're going to just jump right into it and we'll talk our way through it. This will be a multi-part series. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can watch us finish this and eventually smoke test it and see how well it works out. We're going to solve a whole bunch of problems as we get to the other end of this. Let's get to it. Danger glasses on. Dun -dun -dun. Okay, so for some reason in my kit, I bought this thing like two years ago. For some reason in my kit, three years ago? For some reason in my kit, I have this 100 microfarad, 16 volt Panasonic capacitor. It could have just been put in there because, I don't know. All right, so there's that. And I also got this case, and the case comes with these heat sinks. This is, this is killer. This is gonna hurt somebody one day. So heat sinks, put them in the box. The case is the same width as the QCX case, but obviously it's a different length because this is a different length board as you'll see in a second. Inside of this bag of tricks, I have a bunch of screws and some rubber feet. I'm not a fan of the rubber feet, so I'm gonna leave those off, but I will need the screws to screw the case together. And these should be the front and back panels of the case. So when you open this, be careful not to scratch your case up because that would suck. And when I say cost effective, this thing is like less than 30 bucks. Okay, that was in there for sure. Trash can under the desk. We have RF in, RF out, DC power, like I said, up to 20 volts and TX. So if you put in, he says in the owner's manual, if you put in 13.8, uh, your typical ham shack bench power supply type power, it will put out about 25 watts. If you put in 20 volts, it'll put out about 50 watts. All depends on the quality of your build, and hopefully we'll get into tweaking some of that power output in the future. I don't know what time we'll hold. 50 watt amp. Nice. All right, so there's the front and back panel, the screws, and the case feet. I'm going to put them back in their bag and seal it and toss it into my bag o my box of parts down below. So this right here is the QRP Labs Rev2 board. And be careful when you get the instructions off the website because you may have a Rev1, you may have a Rev2. Everything's supposed to be fairly straightforward. There are zero surface mount components, which means I gotta put everything on here. So transformer, transformer, toroid, toroid, toroid capacitor. So that's probably the bandpass filter. And then somewhere in here, probably here, is going to hide the QRP Labs logo with a power output transformer. Let's look at what else we have. Well, that bag was easy. There was only two parts in there. We're 50% done. Now we can just put the two parts together. Oh, a whole bunch of stuff. Don't lose parts. So if you haven't built a kit with us here before, one of the things that I'm going to do with this big white sheet of paper is identify all of these parts as we go through. So that's some thick magnet wire. That's some not so thick magnet wire. I don't know what these little guys are for. Toroids and transistors. BNC connectors are fairly obvious. Diodes, plastic bits, screws, screws, and of course, this is when my dog wants to go outside, so I'll be right back. This is your PTT jack. That's probably heat sink surface mounting stuff. I'm not gonna tape that to the paper. That would be a royal pain.
Okay, so let's start off with the first part here. And doing this does two different things. The first thing that it'll do is help us to identify that we have all of the parts that we need. And if we don't, we can go get some before it's too late. They can be on order while we're putting other parts in place. And the second thing is that it makes it easier to determine uh, which parts you need for which part of the project. And it's kind of a waste of, of paper and tape and so forth. If you want to think about the fact that I'm just going to tape these things down, identify them and get rid of them. Or you can look at it as an easy way to grab the parts and maybe it'll speed your build up. So who knows? But this is just the way that I do it. You don't have to do it my way. And I'm going to try and group these things together because they look the same to me. Well, I guess one of the other things that this will help with is runaway parts. I almost lost one there. Those two look the same. We'll try it out. And just my luck, all three of these will be different, right? Hans does love himself some BS 170s. These are two BS 170s, and that other one is something else. Guess that's where it wants to be. These are both 223s. All right, red and green LED, I can kind of see what they are just by looking at them. And then the trimmer, I can see what that is. And then these two little white dudes here, I don't want to lose them, so I'm going to tape them down. All right, there's a lot of parts here. Maybe I should have done one page for capacitors and one page for everything else. All right, these are both 470s. All right, I gotta go get the dog. So it's six degrees and falling. I can't leave her out for very long. She doesn't seem to mind, but I do. Can't even read these. Increased danger level. Pretty, huh? Nope. Can you read them for me? Nope. No dice. Okay, these might say 391 and maybe 181. Okay, and then before we lose the rest of these little pieces, I'm going to put them back in this bag. So the two LEDs and the screws, PTT jack, power jack, trimmer, heatsink tape, and then these can go in the bigger box. Toroids, all of our favorites. Stick those in the bigger box. More toroids. And we'll leave that the way it is for now. Cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay, so now that we have it set up like this, what I need to do is get my multimeter out and test what these resistors are and make a note of it. But there's another way we can do this also. We can kind of do a process of elimination. So I will sit this here and I will grab a pen and let's do it that way first. Okay, so we have the 0.6 millimeter wire, which is this, this big bundle here. And we have the one millimeter wire, which is the smaller bundle. And then these here are 0 0.33 UF microfarad, 250 volts. And then we need those big wire round, wire wound resistors. Two, two, one, and three. So the three is going to be 1K. And the one is going to be 22 ohms. And then the one with the yellow stripe, these are actually big enough I can read them. 470. And then these here are 330. 
Silicone insulating pads, insulating plastic washers, that's what those are. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Interesting. Okay, so these are the 470s. So these are 47 picofarad. And what I did was I took a look in the instruction manual, I'll show it here on the screen, and he's got a pictorial diagram of what the parts look like, and then he's also got a parts list of what the parts look like. Between the two of those, I'm trying to suss out which one is which. So these these right here say 470 on them. And then in the parts list, he's got 47 picofarad, 250 volt, code 470, two pieces. So that must be what these are. And then let's see, these ones over here, I think I taped these up label side down, which was foolish on my part, but I think these are the 22s. 223. Yeah, so these are 22 nanofarads. That takes care of them. And then we have more parts that we need to identify. Let's go back down to our parts list. Where are our diodes? These are 1N4148. One, two, three, four, five. These are 10K. And then these green ones here are inductors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven micro Henry, 47 micro Henry inductors. And then these are 1N 4007. And then this is the BS-170. And then this is that odd one. But he's got it listed as three BS-170s. And this one is a CS-78L05, which is true. Okay, he's got it, he's got it in the manual in a weird way. 78L05. 7805 is a voltage regulator. Maybe that's what this one is too. Anything on here that hasn't been labeled yet. These little resistors here. And they are not the same. Okay, so this is where the meter comes in handy. I'm gonna put red in red. I'm gonna put black in black. Turn it on. I'm going to set it to ohms measurement. It'll auto range, but I don't like the way this one auto ranges. It's good when you don't know what you're looking for, but when you know what you're looking for, I find it faster to do it this way. Okay, so resistance of this and this. One point four K. Okay, that matches up, 1.5K. These things all have a tolerance to them, so if they're not exact, it's not that big of a deal. There we go, 460.9. And it says ohms at the bottom there, so this is the 470 ohm resistor. And what's this one? And this one is the 480.3K ohm, so this is the 470 kilo ohm resistor. And there is ever so slightly a difference in the color banding. Not enough that I can tell. This is why I use the multimeter trick that I just showed. Okay, so labeled, 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 labeled. I need to label these guys here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. So these are one microfarad. And then I need to label all of these down here. OK. 
Okay, so these are the 68s. 680, sorry. And these are the 390s. And then these ones here I don't like so much. I don't like the reading on those, so we're going to have to play around a bit. Let's see what the manifest says. Okay, so 391 was the 390. Yep. And that says 881 or 681. It says 681, which is the 680s. It says 271 is the 270s. And this one says 181, which is the 180s. Well, that code's not so hard to figure out. Okay, so everything on that page is labeled, and I still don't know about this capacitor, but we'll find out. I'll put it in the box, and we'll get to work. We will need this multimeter later, so I will put it off to the side, and I can lower the danger level from danger level 3 to danger level 1.25. Okay, folks, that wraps up the end of part one. There will be quite a few other parts in this series, so be sure you're subscribed to the channel for that. There are links in the description down below for some of the tools that I used and where you can get this QRP Labs QCX PA amplifier. So far, the kit's pretty good, and this is how I get everything arranged in the beginning. Just wanted to share that with you, and then we'll get into building in the next video. So I will see you over there. Thanks for being awesome.